Salute to Knicks Nation, CP the Franchise here. You know, a lot of you guys DM me and, and let me know how much Knicks Fan TV means to you, how much it's gotten you through a tough time, especially during the pandemic. Some of you even DM me and said that you, you were depressed, you were going through a lot of anxiety, and the show really helped you get through a, a tough spot in your life. And so regardless of if, if you've been clinically diagnosed with depression or anxiety, or you're just somebody who's just looking to get your life back on the right track, therapy can really give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable. And that's very important because in today's day and age, it's very difficult to find a therapy that you like in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online. It's remote, and by filling out a simple questionnaire and a couple of questions, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. Try it out using the link below. That's BetterHelp.com slash KnicksFanTV, and they will give you $10 off your first month. And because finding a therapist is a little bit like dating, sometimes it can be hard, and sometimes you pick one that you don't like, have no fear because because with BetterHelp, you can switch and find the therapist that works best for you without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. And as I said before, it doesn't mean that you've got something wrong with you. It just means that you could be looking to get your life back on track. I've taken therapy before, and it's helped me in droves in terms of getting my life in order and, and getting back on the right track. So I highly recommend it. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the video description or just go to betterhelp.com slash KnicksFanTV for $10 off your first month. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What's good, Knicks Nation? Salute. Tonight, tonight the Knicks were home and faced off against the Miami Heat. This was the third game of group play and the Knicks needed to win to keep their in-season tournament hopes alive. From the get-go, this game was a tight one, but even with all the turnovers to begin, the Knicks were able to match the Heat's physicality and stay in it. By the half, the Knicks were up one thanks to a Quentin Grimes three. But of course, this wouldn't be New York Knicks basketball without a third quarter of doom. And just when all things seemed bleak, when the Knicks were down by as many as 21 points, the Knicks second unit led by none other than Emmanuel Quickly. That's right, Emmanuel Quickly. Put respect on that man's name. He would make a roaring comeback and bring this team within eight. And then what would happen? What would happen next? Of course, Jalen Brunson would have to come back in, right? AKA the closer to take this game home, which he did. The Knicks would hang on to win 100 to 98 to stay alive for the in-season tournament. And they, all they had to do, all they had to do was just score 29 points in the fourth quarter to the Heat's 11 to make it all possible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. At no point when the third quarter started did I think we had a chance to pull that out. Our starters were lifeless. They were playing with no energy. We were turning the ball over, which was a theme for most of the game. But somehow, some way, uh, we figured out how to manufacture buckets. I thought the Heat did a really good job of trying to get the ball out of Jalen Brunson's hands. They played kind of like a light press on him. Um, they didn't want him bringing the ball up. They know that he's a rhythm guy. And um, they doubled Julius in the post for some reason, whether it was our spacing or just his decision making. We couldn't figure out how to find open guys. But like you said, Alex, Emmanuel quickly led this charge back, brought us back into the fold, and then Jalen Brunson closed it. Honestly, man, one of the best games I've I've seen, one of the most unlikely victories that I think I've ever watched, and uh, this was a gut check victory, man, and, and it says a lot about the core and the identity of what this team is. The Knicks had to face a Miami Heat team that won, had won nine of their last ten games. This Knicks team had to face off against a Heat team that eliminated them in the Eastern Conference semifinals 
last season. This is the same Heat team that we have beef with because Pat Riley decided to take the Knicks blueprint and give it to the Miami Heat and create what is now known as Heat culture. No, 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 no. That's Knicks culture, okay? They just acquiesced thanks to one Pat Riley, okay? There's a lot of history. There's a lot of background going into this game. And the fact that the Knicks were able to hold on, come back, keep their in-season tournament hopes alive, you don't think that this Knicks team had something? This You don't think that was bulletin board material? I, I, I was ready for this. And, and look, you could see it, you could feel it. Jalen Brunson wasn't going to let let it this uh, let them get the L. Manuel quickly wasn't let, let them get the L. R.J. Barrett came up big down the stretch too. We had some solid play. Josh Hart, come on, man. This what this game. I, there's there's two. There's obviously only two game balls I have to give out, which is going to be Jalen Brunson and Emmanuel quickly. But look, the fact that you had in the second half Emmanuel quickly drop in twenty. Was it? No, he dropped 14 points. He dropped 14 points in the second half, roaring from three, man. He was the, the second unit was the spark that we needed for this team to get back into it. And I thought the Tom Thibodeau should have made a change sooner in the third quarter when our team was lifeless. You had Miami go on what was like, what, a 19-0 run? They went on a 19-0 run, and there's, Tom Thibodeau hasn't had any answer. But what happens? As soon as it gets down to four some odd minutes left, second unit comes in. They bring the energy. They bring the hustle. You have Hartenstein getting blocks. You have Josh Hart grabbing boards, pushing out in transition. You have quickly drop drilling threes. You have Dante knocking down his sole three tonight, being wide open. This, this is what I want to see, man. This, this game right here, this is the win of the season, okay? Clippers game was the win of the season. No, no, no. This game is the win of the season. Heat are right now one of the top teams in the East. Knicks come in here, get a good quality win. I'm hyped, man. I'm hyped for this game just because what I just witnessed tonight. To come back down 21 points in the second half and st- keep your hopes alive, I- I'm loving it. I'm getting even more hype for the end season tournament. I was already a big supporter of it. This, 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 this took the cake for me, man. Uh, especially against a, 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 a rival like the Miami Heat. I love it. Love it. bed um yeah i gotta say that has got to be one of the best games i've ever watched since the camelo mm. charlotte game um i don't think my heart was racing that fast uh <laughs> since in a while i thought i might have had a heart attack or a cardiac arrest i'm not gonna lie repeat that one more time what was that a cardiac arrest or a heart attack cardiac that arrest yes like. oh that's all the next are gonna do to you man look because yeah. that's that's how that's how this team is. Third quarter of doom. They're gonna make you sweat it out. You're gonna need your pacemaker, okay? You're gonna have to have the ambulance on deck. That's just how this team works, man. But thankfully, they were able to pull this one out. I've gotten used to it somehow. But my first thing that I want to bring up is uh, bring in IQ, bring him into the starting lineup and mm. bench grind. Uh, that's the first take I gotta say. Second take is even though Randall had a little bit of a shaky ending to the game he did do a lot for us for the first half um and i'm happy that thibs had the courage to bench him in the third quarter um hopefully that does give randall a reality check um but to be honest we wouldn't have won this game without the the backup squad the second unit um yeah that's all i gotta say and i'd just like to ask uh alex on your thoughts on if you reckon IQ should replace Grimes in the coming games to come in the season. Mm. All right. Thank you for the call, Joey. Appreciate you checking in. Um, well, let's start off with, let's start off with the question that he asked, man. I, I said this at the beginning of the show. Do I want to put Emmanuel quickly into that starting rotation? Look, love quick, love his game on this team. It's just tough to say yes to do that because I think what we, what we see from IQ would kind of get, muted a little bit in that starting rotation and i'm not really worried about him starting i'm worried about him getting most of the minutes because that's how good of a player he is so look when you look at that for when you look at that starting rotation it's going to be jalen brunson and julius randall getting most of the shots up that's why rj gets most of the run with the second unit because that's where he's going to get most of his shot attempts and the same thing would happen for quick too like they would look for quick to you know, go get most of his shots. Just look what happens when Emmanuel quickly comes in at the first quarter when he's still in there with Randall and Brunson. He's there to help space the floor by being a shooter, not really being himself as what you see in that second unit. So as much as I love Quick, 
I still keep him off the bench. You allow him to be that second unit lead guard, be the captain of that squad, and, and just let him roll forward. But the only the thing I want to see quickly do, do is just get more minutes, which I think he's he deserves because he's just that talented. Every single season, you know, even his second year where he had a sophomore slump, he figured things out towards the end. You started to see that playmaking come through. You started to see that he added a little bit more to his offense. And then he really started to flourish last season. That's why he was second when it came to six man of the year voting. This year, you know, he's just started the season strong. You're seeing that you're seeing that he doesn't have to think of oh my play my playmaking IQ tonight and my scoring IQ tonight. Right. He just has a he has a better feel for the game and he knows when to put his mark on the game in what fashion. So I wouldn't put him in that starting rotation. I like where he is right now. Oh, the Suns on right. Sunday. Look at that. So make sure to tune in for post game live on Sunday when the Knicks face the Suns at 6 p.m. All right, everybody. We'll catch you later. We out. <laughs>